I'm well. How are you? Hey, pretty good. I'm anxious to talk to you because listen, I'm not a good cook uh, at, at, in any form, any capacity. And so we were talking and one of my buddies was like, hey, every guy has got to have like a dish, like something that he can make, even if he's not a good cook, but like on the spot, if it comes to it, like what is easy? What could I make that's easy, but also would kind of impress people that they wouldn't know it was so easy? I love this question. I think, well, it depends. Do you want savory or sweet? I got, I got a couple in mind. Give me one of each. Okay. Let's start savory. I would say chicken thighs are one of the most heavenly bites and almost impossible to mess up because having the bone in skin on effect means that like you basically can't overcook them <laughs> unless you really, you know, are having way too much fun and completely forget about them. Um, so I'm going to tell you, you should be trying your hand at a pan fried chicken thighs. So literally get your chicken thighs, let them sit on the counter 20 minutes, take the chill off from the fridge, put them in a little olive oil in your pan, skin side down, sear them off till that pan, is, till the skin is golden brown and crackly. Some of that fat has rendered, flip them over. That should take you just a few minutes on both sides. And then you're gonna, while those are cooking, make a little herb sauce. Like, I don't, even, I don't know, I'm feeling not a lot of knife skills here. So we're going to use scissors <laughs> and you can just, or pull them with your hands, pull off a bunch of mint leaves and parsley leaves, uh, a little lemon juice, a little olive oil. How about a grate of garlic clove in there? You have a gorgeous, rich protein, delicious dinner with an herby sauce on top. It looks very fancy, especially like I love a rustic come together look. Um, and then for dessert, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do a blender chocolate cake. You have a blender at home? Yeah, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. A blender chocolate cake. Dump in there some condensed milk, some eggs, a little vanilla extract, melted chocolate and butter, some almond flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, literally everything in your blender. I know it sounded like a list. There's probably 10 ingredients in your blender, into your cake pan, 30 minutes in the oven. You will wow and impress and woo anyone you make this gorgeous chocolate cake for. It's super dense and fudgy, like a brownie but better. Is there any but chance though with that chicken that I give somebody salmonella? Cause that's what I worry about with meat. Okay. You want to know how to test for that. So yeah. you want to cut to the deepest part of the meat, which is usually closest to the bone. And you want to make sure the juices run clear and that the meat is opaque. If the meat looks um, still like translucent or pink, that's when you want to keep cooking it. If the, if the juices have any red in them, that's when you want to keep cooking it. But as soon as the juices run clear and that meat is not rubbery, it's really juicy and, and, uh, and moist looking, you are in good shape. You can also use a thermometer, but I take it, if you didn't know if you had a blender, I'm not going to bet on you having a thermometer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we probably do. I just probably don't know where it is. Uh, Daphne Oz is on with us. She is you know, one of the hosts of The Good Dish. And we'll talk about the show coming up in, in just a second. I have a couple other questions for you kind of as a guy who, you know, is just normal. Uh, a lot of our listeners go to the grocery store and they try to save money. Like what is your best tip for a family to save money on a grocery bill? Like what's, what's the overarching tip here for us? I think it's really to shop more often. And I know that sounds really annoying, especially, you know, if they're busy parents or busy people in general, listening to this show, the idea of going more often to the grocery store is really horrible sounding. But I will tell you, you will save so much money by not throwing food away that you forget exists. I would do this all the time. I would buy a bunch of fresh herbs and berries and things I you know, knew I wanted to cook with eventually. You shove them at the back of your fridge. And by the time the week is done, you completely forgot you ever bought them. One of the, fir one of the first things I started doing when I started working a lot more with restaurant chefs was realizing that they keep their arsenal in their pantry well stocked. Like they have their dried beans and their pastas and grains and things there. They have their spice cabinet well ready to go, good condiments, things like that. But they shop for protein and fresh produce almost every day. Now I'm not gonna get there. I got four kids, I'm not doing that. But I could go like every other day, every three days. And what that means is I'm not wasting a bunch of money on things that I'm throwing out. I'm actually shopping much more often what's in season of definitely a way to save yourself some money. You have, you're not buying things that have been you know sent on a world tour to get to you. And um, 
And you're keeping yourself inspired, which I also think, look, cooking at home, you're controlling what's going into your food, which we know is great for your overall wellness. You are controlling uh, the the taste of it, which obviously yields better results in terms of your, your family actually eating what you're putting on the table. Um, and you're not, going, you're not going out to eat a meal that was prepared for you. So it is really a, definitely a, a conscientious and economical way to go, but to do it in a way that keeps it fun and, and practical and easy on yourself, but definitely yields you those fresh tasting inspired results. I would say going shopping more often is the move. A bit counterintuitive, but it makes a lot of sense because like, how do I save money? You go more, Uh uh-huh. But (laughs) shop smaller, but more frequently. Let me ask about air fryers because that is something that I've I've got a little bit of a handle on. Now you do, I don't know if that means good or bad. No, it's my love language. I love an air fryer. Let's talk. Okay, so- I can actually make salmon in this thing. Yes. Little peaches and put them on the little parchment paper and cook some. So the air fryer, is it worth the hype? A hundred percent. And I, by the way, I'd love to hear you talking about like the range of things you're making in your air fryer, because I have to say, I, I resisted getting one for a very long time. I, I, on the whole, am someone who like resists getting appliances that seem very specific. I don't have a lot of counter space or room to store them. So I don't want to get things that are going to just, you know, be things I have to pull, put away and pull out all the time. I use this thing constantly. Um, I, my favorite recipe to make in it, funny you mentioned salmon, is a sweet chili salmon. Um, you just, you know, uh, uh, marinate your sa- salmon filet in a little soy sauce, sesame oil, a little garlic. I like to put some sriracha on there because I like a little heat. It goes in, I think, 400 for nine minutes. The final minute, this is the move a little drizzle of honey, a little sprinkle of sesame seed, the final minute, it makes this sticky sweet glaze over this slightly spicy nuanced salmon. The sesame seeds toast and crunch up. It is the juiciest, most delicious fail-proof salmon I've ever eaten. I like never want to eat salmon another way. And it's done in the air fryer, which is awesome because you can really minimize the amount of oil you're using and still get that that delicious kind of like almost fried flavor. You're talking about so much food. I, I wasn't hungry. <laughs> yeah, I am. But Daphne Oz is on with us. Uh, she's one of the hosts on The Good Dish. It's a uh, hour syndicated show with Daphne, Gail Simmons, and Jamika Pesso. Now, my question is, I have a lot of friends that are singer-songwriters or just musicians in general, and they go, if we're all together and there's an instrument, everyone will look at them and be like, are, are you going to grab that guitar? Are you going to play it? You know, they're, they're just expected. Now, when you go... Are you expected to be the person that brings the food or whips up the food all the time? I would definitely say there is a certain expectation of like, oh, so you'll get here early, right? Like you're going to chip in here, right? Um, Which honestly, I have to say I'm totally down for it. A, because I'm a super, I I know what I like. And I definitely, if they're game for me to chip in and contribute my thoughts, I'm very happy to. Um, but also because it just gets you settled and comfortable. It's why the good dish is so exciting to be a part of. I think we are all desperate for more of that time to connect, getting people around a delicious meal, getting people in a a place that feels joyous and inspiring. And like you can travel and adventure in your kitchen every single day and do it with friends. To me, that's a, that is a highlight of the evening. So I am very happy to pitch in where, where I'm asked to, and I won't intrude if I'm not asked to, I have to say. I love a meal that someone else makes to me, especially when I don't have to clean up. That's a joy. Yeah, the cleaning up. That's awful. Because the deal is my wife will cook and I'll clean up, but I always forget to clean up. And so, yeah. (laughs) You're forgetful like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, So just talk about the good dish for a second, because you three are doing this show. I know we're talking about food, but it's about more than just food, right? It is. You know, I really talk about the good dish. It's everything delicious in daytime. I think we all want, um, you know, to, to, again, like, have that camaraderie, have that those friends in the kitchen that make you feel like you're being supported, you're lifted up, you're getting practical solutions, you're getting the answer, what's for dinner? Uh, you know, the three of us, Jamika, Gail, and I, we all come from a, a, such a very different food background. We have all these expert tips and professional wisdom to share, but we're also three busy working moms. And it really comes down to I can talk to them blue in the face about all the ways you could cook, but if it's not practical and it doesn't entice you, you're not going to do it. So we really try to keep it very doable. Uh, you know, the, we have the, the recipes like the blender cake's a perfect example, sheet pan dinners that are really exciting and gorgeous and, and make the cleanup minimal. So even if our husbands forget, it's minimal, <laughs> minimal extra effort. Um, and it's, it, you mentioned that it's more than just food because food brings you to the table. It's what bonds you and connects you and it makes you feel comfortable, but then you want to 
talk about everything with your friends. We're talking relationships, beauty, some fashion. We've got great guests coming through. Even this week, we have Rob Lowe on. We have Drew Barrymore. Buddy Belastro is coming to make us a gorgeous cake. Donny Osmond at the end of the week. So it really is um, a chance to see people you know and love in a in a setting that they're um, just a different person. They're, it's the very human side of them coming through, which I just think is really fun to get to see. On Friday, show the biggest foods you crave with a healthy, lighter twist. I just don't like healthy and lighter. Like I, I want to hear the foods I crave, but is it are they are they good? And we just don't know they're good. That's my <laughs> trick into something healthy. So it's like a it's like a spaghetti carbonara. We um we actually made our riff on Jennifer Aniston's recipe for this. She reportedly does a carbonara that doesn't have the volume of butter and cheese you or bacon you normally would, but still gets a really sumptuous result. She does it with turkey bacon. And then there is an egg mix that goes in that creates this really like saucy, cheesy, velvety mix, a little bit of real pecorino going on as well, or Parmesan, I think it was. And anyway, you end up with a bowl of pasta that tastes like that big craving you have, but does it in a little bit of a lighter way. We do a cauliflower Alfredo sauce. Um, so yeah, definitely keeping it, keeping the nod towards wellness while still getting you the, the bite that you crave. Well, I wanna encourage all of our listeners to check out The Good Dish. And because we're on all over the country, you'll have to check since it's syndicated, it's on different times. So yeah, gooddishtv.com for all the local listings. Even easier, the good di- the gooddishtv.com. Uh, Daphne, great to talk to you. You are just a wonderful interview. I would expect nothing less though. Your dad was always awesome with us. And uh, not that one has to be good because the other is, but you're, you're awesome. Thanks for coming on I, the show. I loved it. Thank you so much for having me. All right, there she is. You guys check her out at Daphne Oz on Instagram and check out the good dish thegooddishtv.com to find out where it is, wherever you are. Bye. Bye, Daphne. Bye, Bobby. Thank you so much. This is a Bobby Bones show. Hey.